Hello everyone. I have another game here for you. This will be a Carol Kahn defense. I was looking for, I was doing some research for one of my games and I came across this game and I found it very interesting, especially where it took advantage of, of how uh, White took advantage of its space and cramped its opponent's position into resignation. In this game, the white player is rated at 2593 and black is at 2251. So let's get started here. E4, C6, D4, D5, E takes, C takes, and C4. This is a pan-off variation of the Carroll Khan defense. Its main theme is to play against the D5 pawn. Uh, white will develop its pieces with the aim of attacking it, and black will develop its pieces to defend the d5 pawn. So, black plays knight to f6, knight to c3, e6. All these moves are designed to protect or attack d5. Knight to f3, just a developing move, and knight to c6, c5. White has changed the theme of the game from attacking the d5 pawn to a space advantage on the queen side. Black now has good control over these two dark squares and possibly the b6 square. He will also have a three pawn to two pawn advantage on the queen side. And this will also, uh, he'll also use this to develop his plan for the, for the rest of the game. Backed up just a few moves here. Possibly white could have played, let's say, bishop to d3. At this time, I'm sorry, black could have taken at c4. I usually wait until white has moved his light squared bishop before I would make this capture. This way, white would have to use an extra, extra tempo to recapture the pawn. Just kind of a general idea, general theme, <coughs> excuse me, that I use to decide when I, or if I do capture the c4 pawn. So, so let's get back to the game after, uh, Knight to f3, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, it was a knight to c6 and then c5 and the space advantage that white has developed on the queen side and his control of some of the dark squares in white's, in black's camp. Black plays bishop to e7, preparing to castle, bishop to b5, developing move that also pins the knight to the bishop. Black easily breaks the pin with bishop to d7, both sides castle. Rook to e1, bringing a rook to a half open file. Rook to c8, same thing for black. And now a3. This is a multi purpose move. Black uh, is prevented from bringing his knight to b4 with the idea of possibly exchanging these two bishops, which would help black's position since he would be getting rid of his uh, bad bishop. The bishop is blocked in by these central pawns here that are on the same colored square as the as bishop at d7. So this exchange would help black's position and actually get rid of white's better, I'm sorry, his best bishop, the uh, bishop at b5. So um, anyway, white has played a3 and he's also made this move in preparation of pushing his b pawn to b4. Uh, black responds six, attacking the bishop. Black decides, I'm sorry, white decides to retreat the bishop to d3, h6, uh, defending the g5 square from white's dark squared bishop. b4. White continues his idea of expanding on the queen side, taking advantage of this, the space advantage and his three pawn to two pawn domination there. Rook to e8 and rook to b1, uh, supporting his pawn pushes. Knight to h7 and now knight to a4. This knight is of course going to be dropping in here at b6, which will be kind of a hindrance to uh, Black's position. It'll cramp it up. Black plays queen to c7, and now knight to b6. Uh, rook to c, at c to d8, and now a4, continuing to gain more space on the queen side. Black plays bishop to f6. Just a point of interest here. Uh, 
The dark squared bishop in the Panoff attack for black is really best on this diagonal aiming towards the d4 pawn, which is the base of white's pawn chain. Whether this bishop's at f6 or g7, its best idea is to coordinate an attack, possibly with this knight or another piece, to eliminate the d4 pawn, which supports, of course, the c5 pawn in this case and possibly whittle away at white's pawn majority on the queen side. So when you're developing your pieces for black, you should keep in mind that this dark squared bishop is best somewhere along this diagonal aiming at the d4 pawn. And next move is b5. Black plays knight to b8 and now White plays knight to a8, attacking the black queen. Queen retreats, and now white plays bishop to f4. This bishop, along with this knight, will take away any squares that the black queen could possibly move to. And in fact, in the game at this point, black resigned. And if you look, not one piece or pawn has been captured. I'm sorry, there has been one exchange of pawns, but there's all the pieces are still on the board and only one pawn exchange. But Black has resigned because he knows his game's lost. Just to kind of give you an idea, let's, let's continue a little further. Black could have played e5, and I'm using Ripka as the uh, source of my moves here. Uh, knight to b6, and here we'll look at two variations. The first one will be e takes f4. Rook takes e8, check. Rook takes e8, knight takes c8, and bishop takes c8. And white has a queen for a bishop and a knight, which should be more than enough material to win the game. The other variation after knight to b6 could be queen to c7, knight takes d5, queen to c8, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, Rook takes e5, bishop to e6, knight to b6, queen to c7, queen to f3, queen to e7, and d5, attacking the bishop, which is pinned to the queen. So at this point, if black's game's lost, it'll be, uh, be losing another piece, plus more material down the road. So you can see how white took advantage of its space, cramped black's position, and forced resignation after only one pawn exchange, after one pawn exchange. So I hope everyone enjoyed the game, and until next time, thank you very much.